my name is Stephen Apt, and I'm the pastor here at Divine Savior Church in Santa Rita Ranch. And it's my privilege in leading you in this devotion today. The question I want us to focus on is this. Does the Lord care? If you're watching this and you're not a Christian and and you're considering Christianity, it's probably a question that is creeping around in your heart, isn't it? Does the Lord care? Because you see a lot of suffering. You've endured a lot of suffering. And does the Lord care? But even if you're a Christian, uh, this thought creeps around in your own heart too, doesn't it? Does the Lord care? Because you have endured suffering. You have felt oppressed. You feel the victim of corruption. You have had hurts. You've mourned. Does the Lord care? Because you've been crying out. You've cried out to the Lord for help. You've cried out for rescue. You've cried out, and yet you're still hurting. You're still mourning. And there seems to be no hope. Does the Lord care? It's a question that the Jewish people had to have been asking themselves in 1500 B.C., The Jewish people, known as the Israelites, they they were slaves to the Egyptians, and they had been slaves for 400 years. Now in 1500 B.C., they're still crying out, does the Lord care? And what we see in Exodus chapter 3 is God appearing to Moses. Moses has an interesting backstory. He, he was a Jew, he was an Israelite, who actually grew up in the Pharaoh's household, in, in the king of Egypt's household, because his daughter, the Pharaoh's daughter, adopted him when he was just a baby. And so M- Moses grows up in the Egyptian uh, king's house. He lives like a prince, but then he kills an Egyptian guard who was beating a Jewish person. And he goes on the run. In Exodus chapter 3, Moses is 80 years old, and he's out tending flock, he's out tending sheep, he's shepherding, when all of a sudden he he looks off in the corner, in the distance, and there is a bush, and it's on fire. But the unique thing about this burning bush is that it's not burning up. It's on fire, but it's not turning to ash. It's just lit, and it's just going and going. And so Moses approaches the bush. And as he approaches the burning bush, the Lord speaks to Moses from that bush. And here's what we're told. Exodus chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land and into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. The Lord cared. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the cries of the people. I have seen the way the Egyptians have oppressed them. I've seen their suffering. I've heard their cries. And I'm coming to rescue them, to bring them out of slavery, out of oppression, out of mourning, 
out of the, the hurtful scenario and situation that they are in. I'm coming to rescue them and bring them where? To their own land. A land that's described as flowing with milk and honey. A land that is so joyful, so resourceful, so peaceful, so restful, so free. And Moses, you're going to be the one to lead the charge. And Moses says, wait a second, Lord. (laughs) Uh, Who am I to go and confront the king of Egypt? I tried that already. Didn't work. God says, go. I will be with you. And this is a sign to you. You will worship me with the Israelites, with all of the Jewish people. You will worship me on this mountain after I have freed you. Go, because the Lord cares. Does the Lord care about your hurting? Does he care about your mourning, your suffering? Does he care about the hurt you've endured, the oppression that you're under? Does he care about the corruption that you've been a victim of? Absolutely. He cares. And just like he's come to rescue, just like he came to rescue the Israelites, he's come to rescue you. And he's given you two signs to prove it. He sent Moses and he said, this is going to be a sign to you. You're going to worship me here on this mountain. God has given you two signs that he cares for you. Number one, the cross. How much does our Lord care for us? How much does our Lord care for you? He came to this world. He sent his one and only son into this world to pay the price for the root cause of all the hurts that you've experienced, for all the mourning that you've endured, for the oppression that you've faced, for the sin that entangles you. He has paid the price to free you from the slavery to sin. And it was through his shed blood on the cross. And then the second sign is the empty tomb. Does the Lord care? Absolutely. He sent his son not only to die, but to conquer the grave, to rise from the dead on Easter Sunday, freeing you from the mourning, freeing you from the pain, freeing you from this world filled with oppression and corruption and hardship and suffering. He's brought you up out of this world to a new land. But not another country, not the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, and Parasites, but to the very land of God, to the home of our Savior, to the new Jerusalem where there is no mourning, crying, or pain, where there's no hardship, no suffering, no difficulties, where there's no corruption, no oppression, no slavery, no sin. And there you will live forever. Until then, the Lord promises to be with you. Just like he promised to be with Moses through all of this, through going and and, and confronting Pharaoh to leading the people out, the Lord promises to be with you through your hurts, through the pains, through the mourning. He promises to be with you until he gets you to that land where you will live forever. The Lord has come. Because he cares for you, he's rescued you. And you are on that journey until he brings you to your final resting place and it will be the new Jerusalem where you will live forever in joy and happiness. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you for your great love. We thank you that we know that you care because you've proven that again and again in your word. You cared for the Israelites and you care for us. You care for the oppressed and the brokenhearted, the ones who are hurting and mourning, and you've come to rescue us from those things. And you've done it uh, not through physical war, but you've done it by sending your one and only Son. We thank you for sending Jesus into this world to rescue us from sin, the oppressor. We thank you for 
rescuing us from the hopeless situation that we're in by conquering the grave. We thank you for rescuing us from this world filled with its hardships and promising us a new land. Not uh, this land on earth, but the eternal home, the eternal land of heaven. We can't wait to get there where we will experience nothing but joy and happiness and peace and rest for eternity. Until then, Lord, strengthen our faith. Send your Holy Spirit into our heart to strengthen our faith and trust in you, that you are with us, that you are guiding us, and that you are working all things for our eternal good. We thank you for the rescue. In your name we pray. Amen. In Numbers chapter 6, right after the Israelites left Egypt, uh, God instructed Aaron the high priest to raise his hand and bless the people with the Lord's name so that they knew that the Lord, the rescuing Lord, was always going with them. We're going to end today uh, with that same blessing so you know that the Lord is going with you. The Lord who's rescued you, who's rescued you, he's going with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.